Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the Five Minute Read Maker. If you're watching this on YouTube, would you go ahead and click subscribe for me? And that way uh, you will always know when I drop a new episode and it will make it easier for other people to find my channel and to become better read makers and happier musicians. Thank you very much. I want to talk about staples today. I developed a new staple. Now, look, you've seen other videos that I have done on the tubes that I have and tubes that I've experimented with in other ways. But honestly, I have not done the most extensive testing of oboe staples. And I'm not the smartest person in the world about the physics of staples and staple metrics. I look at, for example, Anne Hodge's recent blog posts, the amazing work that she has done defining staple length and width and shape and bore structure, and I see her tables and tables of numbers, and my eyes just glaze over. I cannot tell you anything intelligent about a staple from its measurement. But what I am is a performer, and I know what I like. And as a read maker, I can make reads fast enough and consistently enough to run really good experiments. And I knew that I was not perfectly happy with anything I'd tried, even the things that I do stock and use and make my living on. Like, nothing is actually perfect because it's the oboe. But I thought that there was probably a better way. What I wanted as a performer was a staple that gave me a comfortable amount of resistance because I'm a grown-up. I have grown-up quantities of air inside my body and I want to use that air and I want to feel like I'm doing something when I blow. It satisfies me to blow against the oboe, but that doesn't mean that I want a hard read. I really want the flexibility and the ease and the comfort of a read that is well scraped. So what I like is a staple that has inherent resistance to it so that I can build a light, easy read on that staple and still have something to support my air. Resistance is attractive to me. But a lot of the thicker tubes that I tried gave me trouble in the middle register. Getting over the break between middle C and C sharp, for example, or like a wild quality around F and E in the octave. And I had had consistency issues with some makers as well. I'm, I'm on the record as being indifferent to mandrel fit with staples. Like, I don't really care that much how perfectly they fit my specific mandrel, because my favorite mandrel is just the one that fits in my hand the best. I sort of don't care what the dimension is. But if I take two or three different staples from the same batch and they all have a drastically different fit on my mandrel, well that speaks to inconsistency and that is not helpful. So I worked with Annette Chartier and Matt Beverly of Aspen Woodwind to create a staple that I do love. We started with the idea that I wanted a staple that was silver, because I tend to like that quality, the depth and the mm, responsiveness and flexibility of silver is attractive to me. We started with the idea that I wanted the metal to be a little heavier, and that I wanted the reeds to be consistent. The first iteration that they sent me, like, it was fine, but my response to it, to them, to uh, Annette and Matt, from the perspective of a performer, not from the perspective of anyone who knows anything about staple measurements, was this. Thank you so much. They look great. They wind up really consistently, but there's something a little tight about these staples. I found out that I had to scrape the reeds down farther than normal to get to the pitch floor, and even at that I had a little trouble playing around the break. Half hole C sharp was so resistant and stuffy that it was hard to work with. And I went on to say, I don't know what that means in terms of staple construction. My instinct, based on decades of playing but no real knowledge of the physics of oboe staples, is that the tip opening of the tube needs to be a little bit rounder and that possibly I need a tiny bit less thickness in the staple wall. Recalling that this is only based on how I feel as a performer, does that make any sense to you? And nicely they said yes and they sent me another iteration. So I was delighted when they sent me a second prototype with those with that feedback in mind. And my response to that was that I really liked them 
Um, I have to scrape a little bit more off, and I like that. My concern with those tubes was that the reeds seemed very closed. And I ask, is it worth trying one more iteration, maybe rounder or smaller at the tip, to encourage just a little bit more openness into the finished reed? So the next thing that happened was Annette and Matt sent me five more versions, five more things to try. Samples A, B, C, D, and E, two of each. And here's the thing. Two staples is not really enough to make an assessment on, right? And, you know, they had only sent me two each of the other prototypes as well. But two sample, two staples is a little hard to work with because any couple of reeds can be different from each other for a million reasons. A piece of cane can be denser or less dense, harder or less hard, more or less rounded. I can make mistakes when I am scraping. I am consistent, but I am consistent over a batch of reeds, not necessarily consistent, perfectly consistent from one to the next. So it was really interesting for me to, to wind up these 10 reeds and make 10 reeds on 10 tubes and try to assess distinctions. It was easy for me to rule out samples B and D because they were a little too stiff and a little too shallow. I felt, again, like I was having a hard time reaching the pitch floor. I made really good reads on A, C, and E, but the reads that I ended up playing in concerts that week were read C, were sample C. After that, they sent me 12 more of version C so that I could actually make a good assessment over a good sized batch. And I love them. Here's what I find now. I find that the new staples that we have designed, my new Janet Ingle Reads custom staples, are more resistant than the very thin walled Chirugi staples that I also use in a very good way. And I find that they're more vibrant than the Pisoni artist tubes that I used to be so enamored of. I find that middle C is free blowing and not constricted. I find that the sound is very warm and the pitch is really easy and comfortable. I am so proud and excited about these new staples. Let me show you. Okay, here you're seeing the brass synthetic cork tube that I sell the most often. This is my basic student oboe staple, um, also valid for professionals. It is totally fine. It's consistent. This is also by Annette and Matt at uh, Aspen Woodwind. It's nice. And they're really solid and consistent one to the next. Here is the Chirigi 2 Plus that I also offer. I sell quite a lot of these. Reads on these um, staples are pretty popular. I will say that they are my least favorite of the reads that I make. Um, I don't like how quickly this staple responds. And you can see how thin the metal is just when you compare the brass here to the brass here. Here's the Pisoni artist staple that I've been using for a long time that I'm definitely going to begin to phase out now in favor of this new custom Janet Engel Reed staple. You'll notice that the metal is just a little bit thinner on the Janet Engel Reed staple, that it presents a slightly more polished appearance up top. So this staple is German silver. It is a custom bore that Matt and Annette designed for me. It's a premium natural cork tube. And here are some reads that I have made, and I will show you the results of these reads. You'll notice that the tip openings here between the three, uh, the Chirugi, the Pisoni, and my new custom staple are pretty similar which is good because you know that's how I like to play and when I play on these so there's my Chirugi 2 plus 
when I play on this, I find that it responds very quickly and gives me a nice open sound up and down the oboe. If anything, I have to hold on a little bit up top to like comfortably manage the pitch. It tends to be a little bit more free up there. Here's my, here's my Pisoni. And you can probably hear that I'm working harder with this staple than I was with the other. Um, I like the intonation up top. I like the way this reed uh, supports itself. But it is definitely, unquestionably, more work to play than this. And is this always the case? Like, could I make an easier read on the Pisoni? Are all of these three reeds identical? And I'm showing you, like, perfectly the differences between these staples. Of course not. These are individual reeds uh, that the next read I make on these staples will be different in a different way. Here's my new custom staple. I guess I find uh, resistance wise that this reed falls between those two extremes. Um, it's pretty responsive. Of course, that is just a, a feature of this reed. I don't have any difficulty playing it in tune, and it seems to me to have a warmer quality, especially right in the middle of the instrument. So I'm really happy with this new staple. Here it is again in all of its glory. And I'm going to be carrying these now on my website. I'm going to be offering reads on them. And over time, I'm certainly going to phase out um, some of these other premium cork tubes. Um, but I'm not there yet. All this to say, I am so happy to introduce to you the new Janet Ingle Reads custom staple. It is a handcrafted German silver staple with premium natural cork, and we've honed in on a custom bore dimension that offers a warm sound, moderate resistance, and stable pitch up and down the instrument. I hope you'll try it. I hope you'll like it. Uh, of course, you can find me at my website, JanetIngle.com, which is where you could order some of these new staples or reads built on them, or other reads or cane or a copy of my book, The Happiest Musician. You could reach out to me to ask a question about this or any other oboistic topic. And I hope that you will. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.